adventurers and welcome to Skill Tree where we learn how to do just about everything. Now let's just say, dear adventurer, that you're out on a campaign kicking ass and looking fabulous when... Dear God, is that a, is that a rip? Have no fear, adventurer, for I bring you the Bag of Mending. This simple little easy to carry kit has everything you'd need to fix your clothing, your armor, make some stuff. Basically take care of any little garb emergency you might come up with. So stick around, I think you're gonna love this build. Before we jump over to how to make this thing though, I wanted to remind all of you that we are in the midst of a contest. Our level up LARP competition with Berg Snyder not only is gonna get you some really great gear on the cheap, but is also gonna win one of you a trip to Germany with us to the largest LARP event in the world. If you're interested in learning more about that, check out this video right here. All right, without much further ado, let's jump right into it and level up this skill. Okay, so like all good projects that are coming straight from my dome piece, first thing we have to do is make a paper template on how everything's gonna go together. This one just consists of this little vertical strip and a horizontal strip that I can then fold up to form this little box shape here that's gonna end up being the body of my kit. Using this template, I then started positioning all of the different items that I think a little repair kit like this should have. Now, I'm going to go over how I put all these little things together in a lot more detail as we go. Just know for now, I made them all out of paper and I saw where they kind of fit in that template. Now, with this, I decided to take on an extra little challenge. Basically, I didn't want to have to buy more leather. I have so much scrap leather lying around that the entirety of this project is made from like little cutoffs that I had or just kind of smaller pieces than I would normally be using. So I busted out my giant bag of scraps and tried to see what cutoff pieces I could use to make this thing. After hunting around a bit, I was able to find this piece of six ounce leather that fit my template just right. Having lucked out there, I traced and then carefully cut my shape out. Then of course I went and did all the standard leather stuff like beveling the edges. Now if you find I'm going through a lot of the really simple leather terms too quickly for you if you're if you're brand new to leather craft, you're definitely going to want to check out some of these earlier episodes here. We've already built on these skills a lot so I just kind of skate over some of the more simple stuff. Now again using my template, I marked everywhere that one of the folds would need to take place in order to turn this thing into a little box shape. I figured the best way to make all these folds nice and tight was actually to thin out the leather wherever one of those folds took place. To do that, I ended up busting out this French beveler here, which has this flat kind of knife edge to it. I could thin out all those areas that a bend needs to take place and make it much easier to make that shape happen. Next, I went back in with a paintbrush and some water to wet the leather down in those areas to make it a lot more pliable. Then I simply went through folding up the leather at those thinned points. This worked really well. It actually gave me the exact little box shape that I was going for. All right, so as I said before, I'm gonna put a bunch of little knickknacks and useful things into this, but while they're being held into place by all little straps and stuff, I don't want those rivets and stitches to be showing out on the outside of this thing. I want it to be really clean. So in order to do that, I'm gonna have to make a liner for this thing. So I attach everything to the liner and then attach that whole liner to my box here. Luckily, I just so happen to have this piece of two ounce leather that should work perfectly. Again, I just used that paper template we made to give me all the marks I need before cutting it out. Now, if you look here, I did cut it out just a little bit larger than it actually needed to be. This way, while I'm trying to glue it into place, I don't have to make it like perfect right away. Some of that excess is gonna hang over and then I can cut that excess off to make it look perfect. All right, with that cut, we can get into the nitty gritty of all the little things I wanna put in this thing. Now, if you watch my Alchemist coffee kit video here, you'll know that I like to kind of fit as many cool, useful little knickknacks in as possible. So though this is a small space, I tried to make it super useful. All right, so starting with that little thread keeper I made, I used the paper template to make an exact duplicate out of leather. To get those folds where I needed them, I just used a razor knife and cut about halfway through the thickness of the leather on the outside. After wetting the leather where those folds need to happen, I was able to get these really sharp bends exactly where the cuts were made. Then I went back in with a two hole punch just to give myself space to sew in these corners to keep everything together. Using some wax thread, I tightly secured those corners, which helped me maintain this little box shape here. The thought is after I load in the spools, I could use some sort of a little keeper across the front to stop those rolls from being able to come out. So as usual, I was very much flying by the seat of my pants with this build. So I'm gonna make a lot of the parts first, but you'll see how they actually go together as we progress on. With that in mind, we're gonna move on from the spool holder and start talking about what I cut for the pin cushion. 
All I had to do was cut a two and a half inch by two and a half inch square piece of leather and another piece with the same dimensions, but with a two inch square cut out of the middle of it. Basically making this little picture frame effect. Again, you'll see how that all goes together shortly. But next up, I also decided in here should be a thimble. I've kind of always wanted to make a little leather working thimble out of leather. I just kind of like how they look. So this is a really easy way I went about making mine. For starters, I traced my thumb onto this six ounce piece of leather. Once that was cut out, I traced that onto a scrap piece of suede that I had so that I knew exactly where to add some contact adhesive. Once that adhesive was applied to both pieces and given enough time to become tacky, I secured the two pieces together. Then I just cut away a bunch of the excess material so it was much easier to work with. Next, I positioned on my thumb so that that piece of suede wrapped just around to the halfway point on the top of my thumb. Right at that line, I added a piece of Tanner's Bond tape. This way, I could pinch both sides of that suede together, wrapping it around my thumb and locking it into place. With that stuck roughly where I wanted it, I just cut away all of the excess, leaving myself about an eighth of an inch for seam allowance at the top, and also making the tip around the finger just look a little bit nicer by cleaning it up. Finally, I threw some stitches along that seam just for some extra strength. And honestly, I'm really proud about how this little bastard came out. It's super cute. It's the little things in life. I love that. That came out great. Now, this is a thing that I am for sure going to be using at LARPs and stuff. And a lot of my kit ends up being leather. So I wanted to make sure there was some like leather crafting ability in here. So with that in mind, I decided to also add in some waxed thread. And I thought it would be really cool if that thread was actually like on a spool that rotated. So as you needed it, you just kind of pulled the thread out. You didn't have to actually take the whole spool out and use it. So to make that happen, I just took this tiny dowel here and drilled a couple of holes onto the ends of it. Then I took some of the 16 gauge wire I have and put a crook at one end. I then sent my wire through those holes that I drilled and cut away the majority of the excess. This little hook is going to act as a nice stop for all my spools and stuff so it doesn't slide off. Though that still leaves me with the problem of actually connecting it to the leather of this, right? There has to be some sort of a bracket or something I can use to connect it to the rest of the kit. So I decided the easiest way to go about that was to cut this little strip of leather with holes punched in the ends that are large enough to fit that dowel right through. The plan is to then slide on the spools of thread and then close it off on the other side with my strip of leather and lock it into place with another tiny bent wire. Now I have this little bracket that I can attach directly to the bag and then spool off the thread as I need it. That's another one, y'all. That took kind of an embarrassingly long amount of time to figure out, but I'm really happy with how good it works. It's perfect. Honestly, the things that give me the most trouble are the ones I'm most proud of. I really like how it came out. And that was the last thing that I really had to figure out how to put together or make myself. The rest of it is either gonna be pieces that I bought or like small little strips or squares of leather. Now, because I wanted this thing to be two-tone, so it's a different color on the inside than it is on the outside, I went ahead and dyed all of the internal stuff this nice dark brown. Then on the outside, I went with a saddle tan for a nice contrast. All right, so once that dried, I needed to figure out on that internal piece where everything was gonna land, right? Because it's gonna be in relation to those folds, and if I put it kind of in the wrong space, it's gonna fold up funny and just kind of get in its own way. So to make sure I had that marked out exactly with the rest of the cutout that I made, I just put that two ounce leather into place and then folded up the six ounce leather where I made those seams, leaving these clear creases in this two ounce leather that I could use to orient myself. Cool, so now comes the fun part, actually putting all this stuff together. I wanna start with the pin cushion because I'm really proud of not only how it goes together, but the materials I used for it. As you may recall earlier, I had these two squares of leather, one with a hollow center that I'm gonna make this out of. I'm also using this little scrap piece of canvas I had from making my tent episode. Link to that up here if you're curious. I started by just adding some Tanner's Bond tape all around the edge of that hollowed out piece. Then I placed my canvas into that center area, making sure that I pushed it in to give myself this little pouch shape here. Then carefully adhered it to the Tanner's Bond around the edges, making sure that it's as flat as I could get it. Okay. So do you know how when you use a hole punch or something, you're left with all these tiny little nubbins? I hate wasting materials and I always wanted to find a use for these little things. And it just so happens a pin cushion is a perfect use for them. I simply filled that little pocket I made with all these little leather nubbins, packed as many as I could get in. Then I stuck on the back with a little bit of more Tanner's Bond tape. To make sure everything stays secure, I brought it over to my sewing machine and locked it into place. Then I just cut away all that excess material with my scissors. And look at how dope that little pin cushion is! It's perfect! 
I can't express to you how happy I am that I found a use for those little leather nubs. If you can think of other fun uses, let me know down in the comment section below. That said, as much as I love that little pin cushion, it's a weird shape and I wasn't sure how I was gonna strap it into place without it looking kind of awkward. And then, lightning struck my brain. That is a hook reference, a deep cut right there. I just went ahead and stuck on this little neodymium disc magnet to the back with some contact adhesive. Then I grabbed another one to stick it into place. I just positioned the pin cushion where I wanted it and added that second magnet to the back of the two ounce leather so it stuck. This made it stick exactly where I needed it so I knew where to put more contact adhesive. After applying it to both pieces, I just stuck them together. Now my pin cushion easily sticks into place. All right, cool. So next up was a little insurance policy from the button. Come here, we're gonna, we're gonna stay close. You and me right here, we mean a little secret space. You know when you've been like feasting a lot and maybe you've let yourself go a little bit because you have a desk job now, maybe your midsection's slightly larger than it used to be. Things happen. Maybe you pop a button or two. Things happen. More and more lately, I swear to God. With this sucker though, we're ready. So to protect myself, I started with this small strip of leather with six sets of holes in it four sets for the buttons, and two to actually attach it into place. First thing I did was send a needle with some thread through those buttonholes, leaving the tails of the thread hanging out. By the time I was done, each one of those holes had enough thread hanging out that I could use it to tie buttons into place. Next, I marked on that internal piece of leather where those stitch holes will sit, so that I can then sew that strip into place. Once that was into place, I simply used those loose little pieces of thread to attach my buttons of various sizes into place. This way said buttons are easy to take out and use and replace with new ones as needed. Not gonna lie, my favorite part of this project was that, just figuring out how to position all of these little things. Really creative and fun. That said, some of them weren't really all that difficult. Really simple solutions. For my measuring tape, I just busted out this little strip of leather, which I folded over on itself and glued the ends together. I then punched a little hole where the ends met. Using that hole, I marked on the internal piece of leather where it lands so that I could then lock everything into place with a rivet. Now my roll of tape just easily slides into place and is actually held there really snugly. And since the walls kind of close up on either side of where it would be able to slide out, it's actually held super secure in this bag. There's like no way it could come out when this is closed. I also decided to go with simple on the little thread keeper I made. All I did was sew it into place with this little piece of black ribbon all along the back of it. Now once all those bobbins are in a place, I just put a bow in that ribbon to keep everything from falling out. It works like a charm and honestly it looks pretty good too. As for the wax thread little spooler, I just added in a couple of little stitches to secure it to the wall of the bag. Then assembled my little dowel setup. And I am really pleased with this one. Not only does it hold my thread nice and secure, but it also allows me to spool out the thread as I need it, which is pretty dope. I'm gonna go on a limb and say that's probably my favorite little thing I made in this. I, that's pretty cool. All right, so far I have like buttons and thread and whatnot, but I don't have any needles to actually like secure the buttons into place or use the thread. So it's time we jump on that. To hold those needles secure, I actually just cut some simple little squares and diagonals out of leather. By putting contact adhesive just on the edges, it makes these tiny little sandwiches that I could put needles into. I made this straight one for leather needles and this diagonal one for fabric needles as they come in a wider variety of sizes. Both of them are just stuck in a place with some contact adhesive as I don't see them getting a lot of wear and tear. Not only are they really simple, but they hold all my needles super secure and makes them super, and makes them easily accessible. All right, next up is that little thimble I made. I just added this little Sam Brown stud button here. I also added this strip with a buttonhole in one end and just tacked it on with some thread on the other end. This simply slides through my thimble and buttons down into place to hold it secure. Now the very last thing I needed for this kit was a nice pair of scissors. To keep those in a place, I simply added this little strip of leather with some Tanner's Bond tape on the ends of it. All I had to do was push it around the body of my scissors and stick it to the two ounce leather. I also added a larger strip for the top to make sure it stayed more secure. Then I went back in with my tool hole punch just to give me somewhere to sew and really secure these keepers into place. A few stitches later and a bit of fire to melt the threads and I had this really sturdy place to keep my scissors. And boom, check that out. All my little repair pieces neatly organized on this one piece of leather. Again, it was really fun to figure out not only what I needed but how to make them fit cohesively. 
Happy with that, it's time to actually stick that internal piece onto this external piece here. I just end up using some of this Super 77 spray by 3M. It's super sticky and often used for people who like do upholstery or cover things like speakers in leather. And honestly, it worked really well. Though I think if I was to do it again, I would probably just use contact adhesive. It's a little bit more of a pain to apply, but I don't know, I think I just trust it more. I'm more used to it. So we'll see how this lasts over time, but I don't know, maybe it's just a bias I have. With that stuck into place, I went around the whole thing with my scissors and cut away all the excess leather from around the edges to make everything look tight and clean. And check out how dope this thing is! First, we have this badass little box, and then it unfolds like a friggin' flower, revealing all the full menders kit to work with. I'm stupid jazzed with how cool this thing is. Now we gotta figure out how to hold it all closed. So first, for the little doors in the front here, I decided to use this tiny strip of leather as my latch. I just used an awl to mark out where it would land, and then added some contact adhesive to both that little door and half of that leather strip. Then lock those two together, first with a little bit of pressure, and then by adding a rivet to make sure it's really secure. I also punched a hole and cut a little notch to make a buttonhole. Then on that other little door, I punched a hole and screwed on another one of those Sam Brown buttons. This is nice and simple and really keeps that front area closed. So now to really kind of square up this thing and keep that lid shut, I decided to add these straps that went around the entire piece. After wrapping those around and marking where I wanted some rivets to go, I punched the holes and secured everything into place. As you can see, I left enough room between those rivets so that there was a space for a belt to slide through. Then on the front, I did the exact same thing as before, making a buttonhole and putting some of those stud buttons to hold everything into place. And just like that, this little kit is done. It holds securely onto my belt and at a moment's notice, bam, it opens up to access all of my little tools I need to mend on the go. I freaking love this thing. It's so cool. Like, look at it. Look how cool this thing opens up. <laughs> I love that. It's so awesome. That said, I did feel like there was a little something missing. As I had mentioned before, most of my kit is actually made out of leather. So I really wanted to get some leather working tools up into this piece. So first thing I did was bust out this piece of suede here, as well as this three inch wide strip. At the end of that strip, I added some Tanner's Bond tape and then secured it to the bottom corner of the larger suede piece. Next, I lay a tool down against that bonded area and then another piece of tape right next to it. This allows me to lay that three inch piece of suede over the tool and secure it into place against that Tanner's bond. That leaves me with this tiny little pouch exactly the shape of the tool. Then I just continued that process, laying another tool against that bonded area, putting down some tape right next to it and using that to secure my three inch strap. By continuing this process, I was able to put into place the most basic leather working tools which would allow me not only to repair, but actually craft some of the things on the fly. Then I just went in and cut away all the excess material that wasn't needed for this project. Now to put everything away, I simply fold the top piece of suede over the tools and then roll everything up. Happy with how that works, I just went over to my sewing machine and locked each one of those little seams into place. This way I don't have to worry about that Tanner's Bond tape unsticking as I'm pulling tools out. I also tacked across the bottom of each one of those little pouches just to make sure the tools don't have space to fall out. I even left this little pouch open for extra things like small bags of rivets or buttons of some sort. And even though some of these tools are bulky, I'm really impressed with how tightly this thing rolls up. It's gonna make it super easy for me to transport around and bring these tools where I need them to go. All right, so we have the bag, we have that little tool roll. Now we gotta make them, we gotta make it cohesive. We gotta make them go together. I decided to use these little ring attachments that I picked up from Tandy Leather. These are super simple to use. I just rivet them into place along the underside of those straps. Now all I have to do is loop those straps that hold my tool roll together through those rings and button them into place. With that, I now have everything I need to mend or honestly make a lot of the stuff I use while I'm out adventuring. I can't believe how great this thing came out. I was honestly just winging it, but I am super psyched with how cool this thing is. You can like wear it on your belt or onto your bag or something. It's just a cool looking in-game piece that you can use to mend anything you need. I love this thing. I'm super excited about it. I hope you liked it. If you did, why don't you give me some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. Also, be sure to try out our Level Up LARP competition. I'm really excited with what you guys are already coming up with and how many of you have jumped in on this.
And if you're not into the competition, you can still get 15% off of everything in the Berg Snyder store by using Skilltree15 at checkout. We also get a little cut of that, so it's a nice way to support the channel. All right, I have adventures to go on. In the meantime, though, keep leveling up, you. You stay to the end screen. YouTube loves it when you do that. It is a really great way to support this channel. Another great way is to join these incredible people who are our Patreon. And allow me to shout out our newest high tier level Patreons, Seth Taylor, Matt Hoadley, Robert Jurig, Tercil, Spectre Cosplay, Nicole Pio, Rick Brash, and Fighting Corsair. I'm 90% sure that I butchered some of those, so sorry. But thank you so much. Really, you make everything we do here possible, so I really appreciate you. Now, if you like what we do here and want to support us, consider joining our Patreon, link in the description below. Otherwise, you can click on one of these that YouTube thinks you like, and that'll help too. I mean, you can give super thanks as well and just buy us a drink. That might be fun. I don't go with that. It can mend everything except for the darkness within me.